Welcome to Safety Spectrum, your environmental health and safety connection. This program is a presentation of the Michigan Safety Conference. For almost a century, the annual conference has provided credible educational opportunities and valuable support to the safety and health practitioner by offering 120 instructional programs along with exhibits highlighting the latest in safety equipment, instrumentation, and demonstrations. To learn more about the conference, please find us at mich, M-I-C-H, safetyconference.org. Welcome to Safety Spectrum. I'm your host, Sheila Eide. Our topic today is safety is not a one and done. Okay, we've eliminated the hazards, we hope. We've written our programs and done our training. What are our next steps to enhance and grow our safety and health management system? Our speaker today will provide some insight. Brittany Parks is owner of Brittany Parks Process Consulting, BPPC. She is described as a forward-thinking leader and the founder of BPPC, a firm specializing in safety programs, process optimization, and strategic management. With a depth of expertise in organizational development and a focus on improving safety practices, Brittany helps organizations enhance operational efficiency while meeting critical safety regulations. She's considered a trusted partner for businesses seeking to create safer, more compliant work environments. So thank you for joining me today on Safety Spectrum. Thank you, Sheila. I really appreciate that. Yeah, I know you're a busy lady, so we'll get right to it. Uh, awesome. Take a moment to talk about your company. Absolutely. Sure. So um, as you mentioned, I own and manage a consulting business that focuses on helping companies ultimately optimize their processes, improve overall efficiency, uh, but also build those strong cultural uh, safety cultures. Uh, we provide services like process optimization, strategic management, safety consulting, and continuous improvement training. Um, one of our main goals is to help companies create safer, more efficient workplaces by aligning their strategies and operations with best practices. Sounds good. So how do you define safety culture in the workplace? Oh, what a good question. Um, so safety culture is essentially the collective attitude and behaviors uh, that an organization has towards safety. It's how safety is valued, communicated, and implemented within the company as well. Um, a strong safety culture to me means that everyone from leadership to frontline workers uh, takes safety seriously. Uh, makes it a priority, sees it as part of their daily responsibilities. It's not just a box to check off. It's about creating the environment where safe practices are just second nature. Yeah. I think sometimes people think that safety is ground up and no, it's got to be top down in my book. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. And it's interesting with the problems that Boeing has been having lately. I noticed on a news uh, story, they mentioned that their CEO said that they really needed to go a long way to create a safety culture. It would take years. So I said, there we go. That's exactly what we're saying. Yes, it does take time. Absolutely. So how does process optimization, process improvement, and strategic management relate to building the safety culture in the workplace? Yeah. So um, all three of those elements, process optimization, process improvement, strategic management, they're a key to building and sustaining the strong safety culture. So process optimization helps ensure that the work is being done in the safest, but also the most efficient way possible by eliminating risks and inefficiencies. And process improvement uh, will continually enhance safety protocols and practices over time. Um, so as you mentioned with Boeing, you know, they recognize and realize that the safety culture is going to take time, right, to build and process improvement tools and techniques will help them um, be on the path for that. And then strategic management, on the other hand, ensures that safety goals are embedded in the overall business strategy, making safety the long term commitment rather than just a short term initiative. And I'm sure you've worked with companies where they say safety is job one. Well, obviously it isn't. I mean, production, especially in large corporations, it creates a product such as, well, I don't like pick on one company, but yeah. you know, it, they're, they're, they focus, their, their employees feel the culture is, I have to get this widget out the door. Right. And, and, and I, 
I hear that a lot, um, but safety needs to be a part of the process improvement and a part of your standard operating procedures um, because we'll talk a little bit more about that, but um, if you have an injury, you're gonna have downtime, right? And so that's not gonna help you get your product out the door. If you have um, a, a, an employee who's injured or has an illness, you know, they're going to have time off of work. Again, that's going to take away from getting your product out the door. So what I specialize in is not only looking at the safety factors to ensure that they're efficient um, and best practices, but ultimately look at those processes as well to ensure that it's done effectively and you can still meet your goals while being safe. Can you give an example of how you optimize a process? Yeah, so process optimization is about finding the most effective way to carry out tasks or operations. So when it's applied to safety, it involves identifying and eliminating unnecessary steps or bottlenecks, but also ultimately removing or reducing the risk um, factors around that process. So for an example, Optimizing the workflow in a manufacturing environment can reduce chances of accidents by minimizing maybe manual handling or reducing the exposure to hazardous areas, um, all using process optimization tools and techniques such as like Kaizans, 5Ys, fishbone diagrams. Those are some of the um, top common tools and techniques. So who should be doing the training on that? Who do you educate first? Who do I educate first? Um, I all key stakeholders should be educated um, on, you know, when you go to do a process optimization um, strategy, you should be involving all your key stakeholders. Everyone who has even the tiniest task involved in that process, they should be a part of that initiative um, and be able to have an outlet to uh, provide their expertise. Um, their feedback, their, you know, the people who are doing the work, right? And right. plus, plus the leadership or the people who are going to implement it, right? Um, it, that's where you get that buy-in and where you start to really, truly build that safety culture. Yeah, kind of classic uh, purchasing or the plant buying a piece of equipment without involving the safety activity, for example. And then you go take a look at it and you go, well, you should have done this, guarded that, taken in, they go, oh, so you're, that's exactly what you're talking about. You got to see it absolutely right, yeah, right from the drawing board, right? Right. And the people who are going to use the equipment oh, and wow. get maintenance involved as well, right? Yep. They need to know yep. how to um, assemble the equipment. They need to know how it's going to run. They need to be trained on how to do maintenance on it and what are the components and, you know, do they have the tools and the training to be able to ensure that the piece of equipment's safe. You know, uh, everyone needs to be involved. Yep. Yeah, the classic example is climbing in a warehouse, climbing up a, a stack to get at something. And of course there's an accident and they go, well, engineering designed it that way. Did engineering ever walk on the floor to see how they were going to utilize what they put out there? Exactly, so, yes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Sheila, you're speaking my language. Yes. <laughs> so process improvement, is that a continuing yeah. process? How does it relate? Yeah, so process improvement is the ongoing effort to make work processes better and safer. So it focuses on identifying the areas where safety can be enhanced and uh, making uh, incremental changes to reduce risk. So this could involve revising safety protocols, updating equipment, um, or providing better training for workers. Uh, the key is that it's a continuous cycle of improvement, right? So continuous uh, process improvement never ends, um, meaning safety practices will evolve as new risks or better solutions will emerge. Um, so process improvement tools and techniques that are commonly used would be standardized work, um, plan, do, check, act, cycle, benchmarking, process mapping. Those are some of the, the main common tools and techniques. And I suppose that review would also include, I hate to say it, learning by accident, by reviewing. Yes. So 
we want to make sure that um, if there's a near miss or um, an actual incident that we are learning from that um, and using the process improvement tools and techniques to ensure that that doesn't happen. And we may get into this a little later, but how do the employees get involved in this process of being able to feel that they can safely report something or offer opinions? Do you run into that quite a bit? Yeah, so I, I find that um, a lot of, not a lot of, but I guess some, um, some places they don't realize how intertwined every key stakeholder must be. Um, to ensure that safety aspects are a part of process improvement, process optimization, and um, or they believe that you know their people feel comfortable coming to them with um, different ideas, um, but they think because they don't hear anything, there's no problems. When ultimately there's no method um, or relationship building that has taken place for them to provide that feedback. They just come in and they do their job. They know their, their daily goals. Um, and, you know, but there needs to be systems in place for folks to be able to relay their feedback. And that's probably part of that whole behavior modification type of techniques that we learn. Or we, we should, be, I mean, this has been around for a long time, the behavior part, but it's the relationships. Uh -huh. And when I interviewed some younger safety folks, that's what they were all about, That whatever generation that is. But they're all about building relationships so people feel comfortable. So we're going to share the ball game stats today, but we're also going to talk about, oh, did you see that in the other room? They have a problem there, that they feel comfortable in that kind of atmosphere. Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, I, I've had some examples. I was in the safety business for a long time where people had an issue, but instead of calling me, I don't know if they didn't feel supported or thought they could, they bring in the regulatory people. And so we're like meeting at the door. I mean, that's, it's a failure on our part, as far as I'm concerned, as far a failure on management's part that you don't have to have regulatory folks come in there if you have a system of ongoing communication. Yeah, absolutely. You want your internal people to feel comfortable to come to you with your internal problems and feel, you know, they need to feel that you're a resource and that you will listen and look into it and, you know, truly take their concerns under consideration, um, but then have them be a part of building the solution right? Because they're doing the work. That is their day to day. And I always say, I'm not an expert in what you do, but I'm an expert in um, facilitating and helping, you know, define exactly where the problem is um, that you're mentioning and how to facilitate, you know, improvement that, you know, so you're continuously involved. Um, but yeah, you're right. And that one example I gave you, it was one of those where I said, well, I, we weren't trying to give you a hard time, Sheila. I go, well, you kind of made that my job more complicated. But I was at a place early enough where they didn't have committees, per se, employee-based uh -huh. committees. So I did establish those. But, and it really worked. But what was interesting, they wouldn't just bring up safety issues. They'd bring up all kinds of issues that they had no other forum, and, forum excuse me, to talk about these things. And they uh -huh. felt that they were comfortable they were comfortable and being able to talk about I said that isn't really a safety issue but let me take it over to management and see you know we can resolve whatever it is so that was the way we started the whole let's have a relationship going here so Absolutely. how do you use strategic management how does that relate yes uh so strategic management, it's about aligning the organization's long-term goals with its day-to-day -day operations. So when it comes to safety, strategic management ensures that safety is a part of the organization's core mission, um, that it's seen in their day-to-day -day operations. It's not just about setting safety policies, but also integrating those policies into every level of the business ultimately with collaboration of all key stakeholders. Um, so this means allocating resources, setting safety performance metrics, uh, ensuring leadership is consistently communicating um, and reinforcing the importance of safety and making it a part of the day-to-day -day operation. So um, strategic management tools and techniques that could be used are SWOT analysis, gap analysis, um, or even strategic mapping. Now, how do, where do you fit in the regulations? So, what, what, do you, through, how do you, what do you consider regulations? The bottom of the tier here? 
like the basics? Regulations to me are uh, whatever regulatory body that organization is held to. So whether that is um, OSHA or ISO, um, if it's a healthcare facility, it might be like the Joint Commission. So I'm familiar with, you know, many different industries and regulations. And so I take what the organization says is their standard and compare that to what they are uh, legally being held to. And if their standard is higher, then that's where we're going to plan and strategically ensure that we get to. If it's lower than what their regulatory agencies are saying, then we're going to build to that um, and then achieve that with long-term strategic goals um, if they wish to go above that. Yeah. When I worked for Michigan OSHA, we always thought of that as these are the basics. These are yeah. things that you should do, but we would like to see you go above and beyond. That's why they developed the Michigan Voluntary Protection Program for companies that went above and beyond the, the norm. Yeah, you can Absolutely. meet standards, but that may not be a successful company is what we found. Having a good safety management system creates a, a more productive company. We could prove it over and over again. It's just amazing that there have been studies done that show that those companies are the most uh, profitable absolutely has, and as you say building it into the system uh -huh. so what else do you want to say about those three strategies um ultimately i guess i just want to like convey that these three concepts are deeply interconnected uh process optimization again focuses on the efficiency while process improvement ensures that efficiency is also uh, incorporated safety enhancements. And then strategic management ties them all together by making sure that both the process optimization and the improvement are all aligned with the company's overarching safety uh, goals or business goals. It's like a triangle. So each piece supports each other. You can't have one without the other. Um, you, you, you need all three to form that full triangle. Uh, so without strategy or process improvement, your, your improvements might be inconsistent. And without optimization, process safety might unnecessarily be complicated, right? I hear a lot, well, I didn't have time to put my PPE on. Uh, they don't give me enough time to, you know, do something safely. Well, we need to, you know, look at the process holistically and ensure that all inefficiencies are reduced and we must make time for those safety components, but ultimately ensure that they are what they need and, and that they can apply it appropriately for their specific, you know, operations. Like you said earlier, maybe they say it takes too much time, but having an accident, it takes a heck of a lot more time to fix. Absolutely. And, so. and money too. Absolutely. It's a financial yeah. burden. I always told my folks that uh, you have to be able to talk money as well as the moral issues, of course, of creating a safe and healthy workplace. But you have mm -hmm. to be able to show how in the long run this is going to do everybody better. People are going to get better wages. We're going to make more profit, you know, all of those good things as well. So it's like a three-legged stool is what you're saying there. Yes. <laughs> so do you want to tell me about your most memorable project? Personalize this a little bit. Yeah. Um, one of my most memorable projects um, most recently would be a project that I worked on with a large manufacturer, um, they were struggling with high incident rates, um, ultimately due to inefficient processes um, where folks didn't feel that they had enough time to meet their goals and be safe. Um, and those safety procedures were undefined. Um, it was just, you know, do the operation and meet the goals. Um, but didn't have safety intertwined into that operation. So we started by like analyzing their processes, getting people involved. I love talking with the people who do the work. I love hearing their feedback. I'm ultimate, you know, a lot of times I'm told you're such a great listener. And I'm like, well, I love to listen. I love to know what people are doing. And I love the variety of my job because I get to know, you know, someone else's day to day. Um, and so, yeah, we analyzed their processes, found um, that many safety incidences were linked to outdated workflows. Uh, so 
Yeah. So through process optimization and improvement, we were able to revamp their safety procedures, but also make sure that they were meaningful to their workflow. Um, we introduced better equipment. Uh, we provided comprehensive safety training. We uh, had committees around this. We had, um, you know, process owner feedback. It, it was just amazing to see uh, how well uh, we improved reducing safety incidences just by listening to the people and collecting information and be able to facilitate uh, an improvement project um, through implementation. Um, so the result was not only like a safer work environment, but again, we saw an increase in productivity. We saw a tangible difference we made, uh, for both safety and the workers and the company's performance was incredibly just rewarding and what I love most about what I do. <laughs> I guess that's like the old line about what you think is important. It'll be important to the people that you're working with. I remember yeah. Uh, I kept, I go back to the stone age. Okay. Basically but, you know, <laughs> it's certain processes. They didn't use certain PPE back in the day. And so a bit of, uh, our plant needed eye protection. And of course, people that don't wear glasses just fought back against it. And it was the funniest thing. We individually fit each person with Planos. They weren't glasses. They weren't, let, but they were just plain. But just the fact that we took the time to talk with them, fit them to their, they felt ownership of it. They understood uh -huh. why, and they got it. You know, they got it. People absolutely. Don't to, they don't go to work to get hurt. I mean, absolutely, they're there to do their job, get the work done, do it as well as they can. And I don't figure the problem is the employee. <laughs> it's how we're presenting it. But what you're describing is the continuous improvement process. So uh -huh. if you have a safety manual, it's got to constantly change, right? Based right. on what you learn. So that's absolutely the, as your processes change, your safety needs to evolve. Um, to you know, capture evolving risk or new types of risk. Um, and so your safety needs to evolve along with your internal processes. Because the more you learn, the better you get, right? Absolutely, oh, yeah. It's a TV thing, I <laughs> think. <laughs> PSA announcement or something. So why do you believe this is important? This topic is important. Well, this topic is just so important, um, you know, as we're talking about industries and how they, you know, their processes are changing. Well, you know, rise of automation and industry 4.0, right? That is something that's big right now. And so this topic is important that, you know, we continue to uh, learn and grow with, you know, our safety knowledge um, and ensure that we can apply that um, through, you know, automation processes, AI processes, smart factories, you know, all of these industries are going towards this type of um, work. Um, but it also introduces new safety risks, you know, particularly with environments that combine human workers and robots, right? So it's great and it's efficient and um, there's a lot of great things around, you know, human workers and robots, you know, working together um, or individually. However, we need to make sure that our safety procedures and practices are evolving um, to ensure that we, you know, reduce or remove the risk that's associated with that. Yeah, I understand you work with some high school students here in the Lansing area on robotics. I do, yes. Yes, at Waverly Community Schools, and I have for eight years. Um, and of course, they have a robust uh, safety program as well. <laughs> Thanks to you. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, they need to learn about it. Better to learn in a high school and understand what trade they might want to go into. So I think it's really important. Absolutely. I think you also yes. mentioned the cost of workplace injuries going up. Yeah. So the growing cost of workplace injuries. So the financial toll. So the reason why this topic is so important is the financial toll of workplace injuries will continue to rise. And with companies facing not only medical costs, but also, as we spoke about, loss of productivity, even potential lawsuits, uh, damage to their reputation, right? Um, systems that minimize workplace injuries can have a direct financial benefit by reducing your compensation claims, lowering insurance premiums, uh, preventing costly downtime. So the big takeaway from this is implement safety systems that will save your company's significant 
cost down the road. Makes sense. So have you got any final thoughts? What do you want people to really remember? I know it's hard. <laughs> no worries. Uh, so some final thoughts. Yeah. So I would say the biggest takeaway would be effective safety isn't just about following the rules. Okay. It's about constantly improving how we do the work. Um, and I would ask every listener to just ask themselves what part of my daily tasks can be improved to make them safer for everyone. So process improvement means regularly evaluating things, how they're done, finding better ways to do things, safer ways to achieve the same goals. And just remember that even small adjustments in your workflow um, can have significant reduce in risk. And I think you um, made the point to me earlier that you, you're looking for an inclusive environment. Yes, Absolutely. Building relationships, having an inclusive environment where everyone feels comfortable, you know, discussing things um, and just understanding each other. Mm -hmm. Looking out for each other. Yeah. Yeah. That's 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 the theme for me, looking out for each other and feeling safe to be able to bring something up. It, though sometimes they would just set aside, set someone aside because they knew they were kind of somebody who would not do things correctly. I mean, I've run into that. And I said, well, why didn't you tell me it was, well, you don't want to, you know, tell on another worker. <laughs> we just don't have them do anything like this. I don't, no, 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 that's not going to work. So I knew we had to go a ways in communication and feeling supported. So absolutely, our mission with the Michigan Safety Conference is to enhance workplace safety and health by sharing EHS best practices across the safety spectrum. We heard some thoughts today of ways to enhance a company's safety management program and develop a culture where employees are encouraged and supported to value safety and quality in the production process. It takes time, but it's well worth the effort. I'd like to thank Brittany Parks of Brittany Parks Process Consulting for sharing her expertise on the Safety Spectrum podcast. She can be reached at bparks at bppconsulting.net. If you have questions about this podcast, a Michigan Safety Conference, or you'd like to be a guest or sponsor one of our podcasts, information can be found on our website at mich, M-I-C-H, safety safetyconference.org. Thank you for listening to Safety Spectrum. This is Sheila Ide.